folks, before we begin, I wanted to make an announcement. No, I'm not being demoted to busting tables at Applebee's. Yet. I'm proud to be partnering with Underdog Fantasy for this upcoming year. Underdog's the easiest and best way to play fantasy sports. Where do I begin? Do I start with the daily pick'em games where you use your wisdom and insight to predict how a player will do on a given day? Take the men's tourney, for example. You pick a five-player parlay of any player that's available to select, and guess if they'll go over or under a certain stat line. The combinations and possibilities are endless, and there are plenty of tasty promotions throughout the year that make things sweeter. There are also fantasy drafts on the platform, but you don't have to set rosters or lineups. Underdog selects the best players for your lineup in a given week. You don't have to micromanage it. So you might be wondering why I'm partnering with a fantasy sports platform when I'm a notorious jinx with predictions. That's easy enough. You go on Underdog and do the exact opposite of what I do. Easiest victories you've ever won. Even more than beating your four-year-old nephew at Madden. Unfortunately, all I can do is show my picks for Pick'em since it's not available yet in my state. Get on that, Pennsylvania. But I am good for Daily Fantasy. But you, however, might be able to. All you have to do is use the promo code TREE in the link below and you'll double your first deposit up to $100. It's win-win. Free money and a fun excursion to flex your sports knowledge. And it's all with Underdog Fantasy. Now on to the video. It's springtime in Florida and Arizona. The sun shining on a mild morning with the dew fresh on the ground. You put on your cleats and feel the leather of your glove be broken in with a throwing session. The sounds of the diamond fill the air as birds chirp, bats crack, and hope permeates the atmosphere. Baseball is back. 30 teams are preparing for a season of twists and turns, of revenge and recourse. And the only way to go about it is to dissect them all. The time is now. Years of alleged shanking and toiling in the abyss have paid off. The rise of the Oriole will commence. A wave of elite prospects and talents flaunting the stick and the glove and the arm to guide Charm City to a charmed season. An army of young studs and returning champions crashing the beaches of baseball to conquer the landscape for themselves. But last year showed them they really need an ace. They have solid pitchers, but no game-changing master of deception. Look to Milwaukee. You'll find your salvation. Corbin Burns snatched from the Brewers' grasp in all but a coup. The expectations are back at Camden Yards. It's been a while since this gun of excitement, hasn't it? You get that and endless tension with Craig Kimbrell on the mound to close out games. Thrills and spills all in one. There's only one thing I can say that makes this better for them. The Angelos family is selling. The long regional nightmare is seemingly over. I never thought that day would come. Continued stagnation and contentment are the new mantras in Boston. No longer pushing for championships, but treading a middle ground where intriguing prospects are hoping to gain a foothold. Brayan Bayo receives a team-friendly six-year extension. Liam Hendricks is hoping to gain redemption from Tommy John. With the stacked nature of the AL East, things may not pan out this year, but if a bunch of things break right, maybe something happens? Especially with some of the pieces in that lineup. I'd have optimism, but the real concern is the starting rotation. Chris Sale finally has a healthy season for once, and he's been shipped off to Atlanta for Von Grissom. The original plan was to replace him with Nick Pavetta and Lucas Giolito. But then the gods smited Lucas with a serious injury. Yes, this is the punishment for separating him from Reynaldo Lopez. That leaves things in flux. Do they go and get a Jordan Montgomery or roll the dice with what they have? Knowing the trends of FSG, probably the latter. Throughout the Bronx, screams from wisecracking New Yorker to cabbies on FM radio flooded Hal's spacious office. It was clear the Yankees couldn't coast on past reputation and sit on their laurels. They needed to make a big move. There needed to be another bopper in pinstripes besides Aaron Judge. Everything went to shit the moment he went down and it can't happen again. Just a hunch, but Juan Soto might fill that role for this season. Considering it didn't cost an unbelievably exorbitant amount to get their greatest chips are safe. At least until this offseason when he'll command a premium contract. With him, Trent Grisham, and Alex Verdugo, the outfield has been overhauled. The infield's plan is Anthony Volpe and more Anthony Volpe. But what about pitching? The bullpen should be fine, but rotation mostly depends if Carlos Rodon's slump wasn't a lingering trend and if Marcus Stroman can repeat his first half of 2023. Maybe Nestor Cortez bounces back? Overhauling the staff has commenced, but that may not be enough. It's Garrett Cole. The elbow issues are starting. Good news is that he doesn't need Tommy John yet. 
health is the concern. If they lose one of their golden geese again, it'll be treacherous. You know what Tampa Bay's MO is, so why are you surprised by any of this? They sell off pieces when they either get too pricey or their value is really high, and the players they usually get in return become core contributors to their playoff pushes. It's a cycle that many teams try to imitate but never replicate. But a starting rotation in flux may lead to some growing pains. There will be no Shane McClanahan this season, and a lot of guys are coming off major injuries of their own. Everyone knows that at least three or four men will come out of nowhere to dominate thanks to the Ray School of Hitting. Richie Palacios will probably be one of them because like the church, they love fucking with Cardinals. However, until they figure out a way to win in October, they'll be doomed to the life of a paper tiger. One that mirrors Wander Franco. Incredible promise squandered by their own hand. How oh, would you look at that? At least three guys are ready to replace him in the minor league system. For a team that's at a critical juncture and underachieved in every sense of the word, the Jays have surely done jack and shit to fix anything. Complacency? Toronto? You dare suggest it? Look at the weapons they brought into the flock. 39-year-old Justin Turner. Beloved Yankee Isaiah Kiner Falefa. Eduardo Escobar and Dan Vogelbach? Joey Votto's home on an NRI, that's good, I guess. They're preying on a bunch of bounce back seasons. They're praying for Vlad to learn how to hit with consistency again, George Springer to stay healthy, and Alec Manoa to throw the knife and fork away with an exceptional spin rate. At their peak, the Blue Jays are a team that can duel with anyone. That's at their peak. The Valleys are far more prevalent. And at this point, I don't know how you fix it besides an exorcism. I anticipate much more aggravation and bashing our heads into a wall over this franchise to come. Why is John Schneider still here anyway? <coughs> Southside is the land that baseball forgets and hope they don't have to associate with because it's apparently too good for the area. The White Sox are the old man of the bar reminiscing about glory days that never happened. He says he could have fought Muhammad Ali as an up-and-comer that one time, but conveniently forgets that he never boxed. Their only headline in the offseason was wondering when Dylan Cease was going to be shipped off for magic beads. They wanted a lot of them at first, but they'll simply accept a decent package from the Padres for his services. I mean, when you can boast a rotation of Eric Fetty and a Michael Soroka that hasn't been healthy in four years, you do it. Someday they'll make Eric Crochet into a real starter. You'll see on opening day. Pray that their hitting talent hits things this season. Remember when we thought this franchise could do something with the talent it had? Oh, those were the days, weren't they? Why should I care? The franchise sure as hell doesn't. What do you get when you combine a notoriously skin flint owner with an RSN bubble on the brink of bursting? You get the Guardians. A franchise whose only notable moves on the offseason were homecomings for Austin Hedges and Cookie Carrasco. Right, I forgot taking a flyer on Esteban Florial. Not exactly inspiring. Jose Ramirez seemingly stands alone on a hilltop of greenhorns and ghosts of baseball's past. A team that's trying to answer the same questions as seasons before. Can they get consistent hitting from more than two players at a time? Will they have more upside than being AL Central merchants? Can they overcome the loss of Tito? And what happens with Shane Bieber? He's due to be a free agent and I highly doubt that Cleveland will have the stomach to pay him what he wants. When optimal, the rotation and pen are one of the best in baseball. The gods obviously punished them for it last season with injuries and regression. The world needs more feel-good small market stories in baseball. Will the Guardians be one of them? Who am I kidding? They're doomed to be a bridesmaid. In the Motor City, the Tigers are in an interesting spot. The rotation has promised. They have pieces in the lineup that could signal a better tomorrow, but it's not ready for a showcase just yet. They need to be dolled up a bit more before they can get there. It requires a facelift in the form of mid-tier rotation pieces. Kenta Maeda and Jack Flaherty, to be precise. The likes of Andrew Chafin and Shelby Miller for the bullpen. Gio Urshela as utility. Young pieces in the future course showed flashes of being sustainable last season, and the hope is that it continues on here. In the year of our Lord 2024, it's time for progress to be made in Detroit. They have to show something long robbed of them under the reign of Alavilla. Sustained winning. Can they finally break out of this long-cursed existence of suck? Or will they simply be Javi Baez on a breaking pitch? What a strange baseball landscape we live in. And of all the teams that spent money this offseason, the Royals were somehow one of them? It wasn't like they were getting guys off the bargain bin either. These were quality mid-tier free agents. Guys like Michael Waka and Seth Lugo, Adam Frazier and Hunter Renfro, Will Smith and Chris Stratton for the bullpen. To be fair, they need all of them. Their farm system's been pretty hit or miss for about a decade. For every Vinny Pasquantino and Cole Reagans, they're about 100 Hunter Dozers. We never mention that name to Kansas City again. 
Chiefs have been having too much fun and attention in this city. It's time for this team to shit or get off the pot. We've been rebuilding for over half a decade now. When does the winning restart? When will pitching be more than cookie servers? Well, as long as Salvi's still kicking, there's a feeling of comfort in the air. Bobby Wood Jr. will hopefully take that mantle with the massive pile of cash he's being given to be a royal for life. George, Brett, eat your heart out. <coughs> Crisis with RSNs and Valley Sports has led to a lot of questions and hesitation in the ranks. Significant pauses in spending and some cuts have to be made since no one knows which deals will lapse or not. Minnesota was one of these teams. Their losses weren't devastating, but a huge chunk of their starting pitching as well as Jorge Polanco were let go to shed salaries. The only reinforcements they'll get are in the form of Manny Margot and Carlos Santana Central Team Tour. Anything else will have to be improvements from within. Mostly in the hopes of durability. Please, if I ask of anything, may we have a fully healthy Byron Buxton for longer than two months at a time. Can we keep Royce Lewis hitting Grand Slams instead of hitting the trainer's room? I'll even take rumors of Carlos Correa's demise to be greatly exaggerated. If this team can stay healthy, they could go far. Twins finally had some good news this past year with the playoff series win. Don't let that be it. <coughs> Move some parts out, bring upgraded units into the fray. The motto of every team eager to taste championship glory once again. Dusty Baker and Michael Brantley locked arms and joined the baseball afterlife side by side. But such somber farewells can't be dwelled upon. What really matters is extending Jose Altuve for five more years. And hoping to God they can reach agreement before Alex Bregman hits the open market. If things somehow go south on that end, there's plenty more to keep up appearances, but you'd think they'd find a way to secure his services, right? Here's another dilemma. So the bullpen stacked and you fell just short of the ultimate prize. Keeping up with Texas? No sweat. Just add Josh Hader to make it even deadlier. As for the starting rotation, best not to look at it right now. A good chunk of it's been butchered under the knife, and no one knows Verlander's status right now. At least he's got a chance of playing in April <coughs> unlike Jose Urquidy. Still available. If you want to piss off a lot of people on Twitter, Trevor Bauer's sitting right by his phone. <coughs> if you weren't paying attention, and you honestly shouldn't be, one of the greatest failures in organizational history has been sealed. Shohei Otani, a tremendous talent blessed to the angels by the gods, has left for greener pastures. Everyone knew he was gone, but did it really have to be like this? He didn't just go elsewhere, he moved next door with their snotty elitist older brother. A humiliation of humiliations. Yet Artie sits around laughing as Mike Trout rots from within. The only consistency about this team is how they're mangled. Did the Angels have talent? Yep. Did the Angels manage to piece it together for once? Maybe. Will everything predictably fall to shit because this organization can have nothing nice? That's a guarantee. Now stack the AO West is the hope is that they can pounce on a falling star, but it's gonna take a lot to get them over the top. Mostly overcoming the anchor that is Artie. This team is Charlie Brown on the mound. Just can't win no matter if they go for it all or half-ass things. Speaking of half-assing, my goal in life is to become Anthony Rendon. Getting paid fuck you money and giving zero fucks about what anyone thinks. That man's got his priorities straight. Riddle me this, baseball world. If a franchise is leaving a city next year and next to no one cares about it, does it whimper quietly into the night? In a move that is totally being done for the sake of fandom and integrity, we get to re-experience the feelings of the 2004 Montreal Expos. Without the forced long-term vacation to Puerto Rico, of course. The Ace themselves are still undergoing the deepest of rebuilds. Mainly hoping that they weren't ripped off at the altar on all their moves and bringing in placeholders so they can be the slightest of competitive. Will they play after this year? Who the fuck knows? It could be in another city, it could be Steel Stadium, it could even be back at Oco. The possibilities are endless. And Las Vegas is so eager to get them here that the mayor of that city said they should stay in Oakland. Wait, that's not right. The lower of 54% is a mantra cherished by several in the Mariners organization. The standard that inspires them in the quest for a great 88 wins. Things didn't go so well last year, but they were just a game away from shocking the world like the Rangers did. Think of what could happen if they somehow make it. Getting rid of Robbie Ray so Scott doesn't use him against Jordan again can only help. Mitch Hanniger's back, baby! Jorge Polanco's here to solidify the middle infield in a big way. World Series champion Mitch Garver is the DH of the future. Of course, having J-Rod on your team makes things a lot more palatable. Plus that rotation! The envy of the world at its peak. Now can they score runs with consistency? That's the real debate worthy of stoking. It's what Seattle's been trying to fix for about an age or so. My fear is that it will continue on for another age. 
long, miserable road of mediocrity has ended. Today, a new path is being forged. One where Ellington is the mecca of baseball in Texas. Last year was merely a taste of things to come in their eyes. Years of failure overshadowed by the blooming of glories untold. The loading will continue. Another year of Max Scherzer when he comes back, and about six starts of Jacob deGrom? That's an arsenal of doom. Whenever it returns to health, obviously. The arms will just have to hold their own until Nurse back to form. I'd say the bat should do more than enough of that. An already loaded and young arsenal is about to get deadlier. Remember how Evan Carter took the league by storm last fall? Just you wait until you meet Wyatt Langford. He's absolutely crushing everything in his path. And with the praise being bestowed, people are already dreaming about what he could be in the show. And in that, they dream of the Rangers. Well, Rangers fans do. The rest of baseball hopes that last year wasn't a trend. At the Battery, the desire is to continue to upgrade on the cheap thanks to locking up the core at bargain rates. If you can find pieces that can aid in the quest for another World Series, you do it, damn it! The likes of Kyle Wright and Michael Soroka have been damaged beyond repair. And their trades are a real bummer. But look to Boston. Chris Sale is on sale for over 50% off! You can't let that slip away! Jared Kalanick's available for next to nothing! Just watch, he fulfills his elite potential here in Seattle's green with envy. Adam Duvall on his third tour of duty where he randomly hits 30 home runs here! Or is it his fourth? As always, the expectations are sky high in Atlanta. And the Braves will be looking to avenge the failings of the last few seasons. Especially to a division rival up north. No point in saving money on the core if it runs out of gas. Don't do that again, yeah? Miami is in a challenging state. Not because of anything they're doing, the team surged to a surprise playoff berth last season. It has more to do with Sandy Alcantara being out of commission in 2024. Perhaps he transferred his power so that Sixto Sanchez could walk the mound again? He's still alive? I remember that magical 2020 campaign of his like it was yesterday. That rotation, regardless of Sandy or not, should be a force of fear and reckoning. Their hitting core, they're hoping, is more of the same as it was in Flashes. Luisa Rice hitting like Gwyn, Josh Bell and Jake Berger with the bop, and Tim Anderson as a hopeful bounce-back candidate. The Marlins are full of gambles, redemption arcs, and a group pieced together on a hope and a prayer. If things break out as hoped, they'll be back in the playoffs. At this point, it's all you can ask for out of them. <laughs> Mets baseball is a collective. Everything just blurs into one gelatinous blob. All is the same as it was and shall forever be. Last year's perpetual metting has forced the organization's hand. They weren't joking when they said they'd be punning to 2025, you know. Queens did pretty much nothing in the offseason. Oh, we'll tremble at the majesty of Luis Severino and Sean Manaya. This were 2021. Jimon Choi and Master Bader, same principle. Have some value, but they aren't anywhere close to being Pete Alonso. Speaking of the polar bear, are they going to be trading him this season? Doesn't look like either side is close to a deal. Be thankful that Edwin Diaz is back after last season's freak injury, but his health is countered with another painful loss. Did you like Kodai Senga? His elbow is being ghostballed as I speak. Jesus, again? This team really is a repetitive loop. The taste of last year's sudden failure is a bitter pill to swallow. They put the cart before the horse, so to speak. One shining moment away from another chance at destiny up in smoke like a Craig Kimbrell fastball down the middle. There were questions that needed to be asked. Souls to search for answers. But one thing is certain. The Dombrowski team will never give up and stop spending. They have secured their offseason prizes. Aaron Nola's back after a scare on the open market. And Zach Wheeler won't even test it after agreeing to an extension of his own. The rotation workhorses are here to stay and their bats are still as deadly as ever. Unfortunately, without Reese Hoskins, but Bryce Harper took over first base duties with ease. We know what Philly wants. It's Steve Dombrowski's precious. Another World Series to hoard in the caves below. Trust Dave, you can never have enough of them, you know? It's time to answer the question that everyone has been dying to know. Is Steven Strasburg reporting to spring training? The answer's yes, but he's not playing. Because of, you know, the career-ending injury and such. Not to say that the Nationals aren't a team that piques my interest. The prospect core and hitting talent they've assembled makes me wonder if this team could make noise in the next year or two. Once they get out of the Strasburg and Corbin contracts, of course. The likes of Dylan Cruz, Brady House, C.J. Abrams, and James Wood leading the way? Their time will come just yet. Don't know if it'll be this season, but days should be brighter ahead. 
Now, as long as the learners find a bidder for the team, I'd say things are on the up and up. So they're not selling, you say? Life is strange in a lot of ways. The hunger and drive to get back to October Ball fuels Northside for what seems to be an eternity. After last September's horrific collapse, they simply can't afford to forget how to baseball yet again. What they've done is not enough. More power is needed for the Cubby Machine. To lead them an experienced and steady hand in Craig Council. The fetch quests for Shohei Otani and Yoshinobu Yamamoto were furious, but they came up short. They did get Shota Imanaga as a consolation prize, though. And Cody Bellinger's back! Somehow. You wanted over 200 million? Yeah, that's funny. You'll take a short-term deal and like it. Bellinger or not, the pressure's being turned up this time around. There will be no respite until the promised land of the playoffs has been reached. Then, and only then, will Chicago fulfill their destiny. Hopefully without the horrible pain that's been suffered. You fail again, look on the bright side. You aren't the White Sox. Cincinnati's situation is a lot like Chicago's. The late season crumbling cost them a chance at the postseason. But unlike the Cubs, it was more of a house money season. The farm is starting to come to harvest. A red feast at the plate. But hopefully this crop has better outcomes than the last few. To say they were disappointing would be an understatement. In an effort to get them over the hump, reinforcements are here. Mainly Jamer Candelario and a handful of hired arms in Nick Martinez and Frankie Montas. But the real revelations will have to come from within. The departure of Joey Votto means a new age is here. Can Ellie Dela Cruz hit for more than three weeks? Will Hunter Green and Nick Lodolo lead the rotation as hoped? Is Jonathan India on pace to become the most hated Red since Pol Pot? The hope is that the answer to most of those are yes, but bad news on the horizon. <laughs> TJ Friedel's out with a broken wrist. And Noelvi Marte was caught with steroids. Oh great. So does anyone want to tell me what this team is? Or a combination of competitive and hesitant to take the next step in the process? Feels like the organization has pulled the rug from underneath itself out of what I can only describe as buyer's remorse. Or perhaps it's just the uncertainty of their RSN deal. Craig Council was lured an hour south with a shitload of money. Corbin Burns was freed for what Baltimore deemed as excess goods. Yet they gave a long-term deal to the next potential face of the franchise in Jackson Shurio. Wait, that's a good move. So is somehow finding money under the couch to pay Reese Hoskins. Gary Sanchez might replicate what he did as a Padre, too. Even with the losses, it's obvious the Brewers will be competitive, especially with the riches upon riches in their bullpen. But the starting rotation will have to be changed up on the fly. Plus trying to find the usual consistent hitting, but it shouldn't be too bad. At least until October comes around. Good lord, they need to avenge those demons badly. Don't get your hopes up, Tree. Don't you dare. We've been down this road before with the Pirates. The moment you think things are starting to turn the corner, they'll find a way to break your heart. I look at Paul Skeens being the ace of the future, a healthy year of O'Neill Cruz, the prospect wave starting to hit the shore, and hope they don't fall back in and think this team could be something. But I have to keep reminding my cynical ass that they still have severe flaws. They're hampered by trying to dig through the bargain bin. Rowdy Talez at first base. Yasmani Grandal, Martin Perez, Marco Gonzalez, and... Aroldis Chapman. Okay, that's out of left field. Speaking of that, Kutch is back for another round of nostalgic glory. Plus, he's still a decent hitter and solid clubhouse leader. Yeah, it's put up a shut-up time for Pittsburgh. Progress was made last season, but it'll have to be for more than spurts. Prospects will have to emerge as core contributors. Especially in the rotation. Wait, when the hell did they get Domingo Herman? They have had the worst season in ages, and the fan base is frustrated at the arrogant stagnation taking place. Did you seriously expect the Cardinals to change and undo the great traditions of St. Louis? Heavens no, they have to bring even more of the gang back. Matt Carpenter's had one flash in the pan in the last three years, but he's back and so is his delicious expired salsa. The pitching of Lance Lynn, he's home too! Kyle Gibson and Sonny Gray for more veteran experience in the rotation. Brandon Crawford? the feels? It looks like Goldie and Arenado are gonna have to carry this team again. It's the only way they're gonna get back to the promised land of October. As everyone calls for Oli Marmol's head when he somehow mismanages things in the wild card. He's already been rewarded with an extension for when it happens. Thus staving off the rumors of Yachty as manager for the time being. Fuck, even the Steelers are adapting to modern times kicking and screaming. <laughs> Last year's run was magical. Sudden World Series appearance that came out of nowhere and fell flat about as fast as it came around. 
When you get a taste, you want more. The hunger has returned. Mediocrity overshadowed by merit. A desire to prove that last October wasn't a mere fluke. The young stars in tow, the rotation arms of power and finesse, the time has come to add to keep up with the Joneses of the division. For more batting prowess, welcome Jock Peterson and Eugenio Suarez into the fray. Plus re-inking Lord Escuriel. They may not be enough to match the Dodgers, but they can piss them off by signing Eduardo Rodriguez to a nice contract. Real ones, remember. Real ones also replicate the sorcery that they conjured in brief spurts. They've done some upgrading, and the progression of the young core should be plenty of improvement, but is it enough to get back to the World Series? I mean, I guess it's possible, but it's gonna be extremely tough with the rivals nipping at their feet. Colorado, can you do something? The rest of your division is loading up for big runs and ready to fight each other to the death. Making an appearance of confidence will go a long way to filling Coors Field this summer. What will you do to respond? Pretty much nothing. That sounds about right for a franchise run by AI. One with incredibly fucked up hands. Cal Quantrill and Dakota Hudson. Jacob Stallings. Are you looking at baseball reference pages from 2019? Great, we can see everyone rot in real time while Charlie Blackman pads his IRA. No wonder why Chris Bryant regrets signing in this shithole. Wake me when they manage to make it worth our time or get Nolan Jones the hell out of there. Give me your talent. Give me your healthy arms. Give me your highest profile athletes from the rising sun. The sun shall rise to a Dodger blue sky blessing the world with its power and might. Past efforts to load and power forth were not like this. Now they have a roster worthy of the gods themselves. Shohei Otani is the newest weapon in this arsenal with his bat in 2024. Given the riches of man itself. Mostly deferred to a future date to help out now. They need that cash to lure Yoshinobu Yamamoto over. An elite arm on top of elite arms. Bobby Miller's emerging. Walker Bueller's due to return sometime. Oh, Kershaw's back for another round. Oh, there happens to be a Tyler Glass now we found on the doorstep. Just put him on the shelf though, use him when 10 starters go down with injury again. The Dodgers will not stop until another World Series is theirs. Oh, look at how much they threw at Teoscar Hernandez for a year. A seemingly impenetrable juggernaut that will gentrify every opposing stadium with a Dodger barcade. If only there was a weakness that could be exploited. One Achilles heel of this immortal warrior. That would be a wonderful sight to witness, wouldn't it? The day of reckoning has come for San Diego. The fever dream of gunning with the big boys comes with the inevitable bill to pay. And sadly, the Pipers come demanding his due. It doesn't matter that the end goal wasn't reached, the cost is dire. Payroll shedding will be significant. Even more so than the original rumors had suggested. Degrading from high end to mid table. So many pieces left to wander baseball eternal. Mike Schultz desperately trying to keep everything at bay despite the gutting of the pitching staff. Morale is low. Seemingly best chances at Gloria pass them by. And a lot of it is due to elements out of their control. But the Padres refuse to simply give up. No, the chance is still there to break out of this hell. The hitting talent is still mostly intact. Top prospects are still on the way. The pitching has fascinating overseas acquisitions and a new rotation arm bought for a premium. Dylan Cease is an intriguing gamble for a team still in the hunt. Last year was merely a shit ton of terrible fortune. And this year can't be anywhere near as bad in extra innings and one score games, right? Basic luck has to at least make them average in that regard. Even if it costs them their high end power. When did the Giants become such an unwanted misfit in the baseball world? There's nothing wrong with them as an organization. It's just that in the past few seasons, they've had no luck bringing in the elite talents that they desire. It even started out as such early on in free agency. But ingenuity is the product of necessity. San Francisco finally got their prizes. Look to Korea for their next elite overseas product. Jung Hoo Lee lured into the bay for the outfield. Jorge Soler for extra power. Robbie Ray is a bounce back candidate for the rotation. Jordan Hicks. As a starter. Oh my, what have they found at the thrift store? Christine original pieces in Matt Chapman and Blake Snell? On short term deals. That's a low key power move they pulled. The Giants see the Dodgers loading up and they're responding in kind. Intrigue is the name of the game. A lot of fascinating upside if everything works out as planned. They've always had strong pitching, but can they get back to that magical 2021 high? Maybe if they stop botching everything in the field. 
That Chapman should help out with that. Come hither, my friends. This video has gone on for far too long as it is, but I have very poor playoff predictions to make. To guarantee or double your money back. And my divisional picks for the NL last year are a testament to the god-awful nature of this. Mets, Cardinals, and Padres fans still haven't forgiven me. On screen, you will see the horrible jinxes that shall plague baseball in 2024. My sincere apologies to the teams that have been afflicted by this heinous curse. I should honestly be more like Anthony Rendon in this situation. It would make things much more palatable for me. There's only one thing to do now. Play ball. Machado drives one to deep left field. It is back and it is gone. Three run home run for Manny Machado. A blast in Seoul, South Korea.